Won't lie, I'm a bit annoyed to be recording this video right now because I actually made this video two days ago, but stupidly, about two hours ago, I deleted it. Permanently. So that was dumb, so now I'm remaking it. Welcome to the best cheap foot heroes in FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. If you need some coins to improve your ultimate team, look no further than IG Vault for the cheapest coins on the market. And if you use the code Kieran at checkout, you'll get yourself a nice little discount off your order. Now, how are we defining cheap in this video? We are saying under 200k. And to be honest, most of the cards in this video, in fact, I think nearly all of them are well under 150k. I think there's only one that actually goes above that, and he's about 170. So they're all extremely cheap and very attainable at this stage of ultimate team. And they're probably going to get even cheaper as well. I'm sure by the time you guys are watching this, these prices have probably changed even more because this year the market is crazy. I'll say straight away, neither of the goalkeepers make my top 10. Campos, just because he's 5'7", just isn't a good goalkeeper in the game. I like the idea of the card, but for like an ultimate team squad, he just isn't good enough because he's too short and he will get beat with any shot that goes anywhere near the corner of the goal. Also, Dudek, I don't think he's too bad, but ultimately don't think he's great value. There are Premier League goalkeepers that are better than him for much less. If you're wondering where Morientes is in this video, at the time of recording, he's currently 230k, so I chose not to include him, but he's pretty good to be fair, so probably would have ranked pretty high. Anyway, let's get into my actual top 10, but just before we do that, in the comments below, let me know who your favourite foot hero is in FIFA 22 Ultimate Team, and also let me know which top 10 I should do next. Another thing to consider is I do take value for money into consideration when doing these rankings. With that in mind, let's begin. In at number 10 is going to be Tim Cahill who at the time of recording is coming in at 45k on PlayStation 70k on the Xbox and if I'm being honest after using him I just think he's a bit one-dimensional like he isn't bad in like any area in particular but other than aerial ability he doesn't really stand out in any other area either so because of that I do have to rank him quite lowly but still a fun card to use especially if you do like to cross a lot with your playstyle because he does get on the end of many crosses despite might not be the tallest player but because he's got elite jumping and very good heading accuracy so if you're good with headers if you're good with crosses it's definitely a card worth trying out but if you want someone to run with to dribble with you definitely should look for other options Following on from him, in at number 9 for me is Lars Ricken. It's actually a good card. Like, do not get me wrong, just because I'm ranking him low does not mean he's a bad item at all. Very usable card. I just feel like he's already been outdated. You've got Player of the Month Vets, who I think is better already. And you've also got Road to the Knockouts Royce, who obviously I know is much further on the price scale, but he is just much better than this card. And this item, obviously, like all of them, are going to get more and more outdated as we get more promos. But still, very usable item. Four star weak foot, good pace shooting and passing on this card not as agile as i would like in game but still a pretty good attacking mid option coming in at 48k on ps and 65k currently on the xbox cha cha mario gomez is the next player we are going to talk about and this is a card which i do actually like it's a fun item but once again it's one of them cards who you're gonna have to do a lot of work around to get the most out of him but i will say this he is probably the best finisher in this top 10 like his finishing is top top draw and i would argue pretty like near enough end game it is not far off especially with the right chem style if you need a finisher in your side this guy could de certainly be an option but he is just you know a proper target man like i said before about Cahill, you do have to play a certain type of way to get the most out of this guy but if you can play with that game style and enjoy it you will definitely get a lot out of this card 90k on the playstation 115 on the xbox right now not too bad value but um yeah as you can imagine there are are already better Bundesliga strikers already in the game and that's one of the reasons why I can't rank this guy too high especially in terms of value for money because ultimately although I do really like this Gomez card would I use it over a Haaland no would I use it over a Lewandowski no I would not so uh, that's a shame but still a very good card and like I said if you have the right playstyle for this item you'll get a lot out of this and in your mind you might definitely rank it higher Manchester United's current manager at the time of recording is the next player we are going to discuss. Solskjaer, just under 200k on Xbox, so just makes it into this video. Um, pretty good card. I enjoyed using him, but I've got to say, he is one of them items who, when they play for my opposition, they seem even better. I hate playing against this card, because his finishing ability in-game just seems broken when I come up against it. So, yeah, good card, but even better for my opposition, it seems, and uh, definitely deserves to make the uh, top 10, in my opinion. If you've used this card, let me know how you got on with it in the comment section down below. 
Now this one might surprise some people because of how high I've ranked him compared to some other strikers, but up next is Al Jabba. Now obviously he is very cheap, I believe he is actually one of the cheapest heroes. Currently 22k on PlayStation, 30k on the Xbox, extremely cheap. Obviously it's not the easiest player to link in two teams, however he's pretty good and he can make for a very, very good super sub option. Obviously got plenty of pace about him, his finishing ability is actually to a very good standard, he's also got decent composure, dribbling isn't that bad, especially with the engine chem style applied and the same can be said for his passing and on top of all that, his strength isn't that bad either. He actually is a very, very good super sub option. The only thing I wasn't too keen on on this card to be honest was the fact that he does only have a three star weak foot but other than that, as I say, for this stage of the game especially, I think it is a pretty effective card and if you need a super sub attacker, then this guy should certainly be considered. I think he's pretty underrated and uh, as I say, for 20k on the PlayStation, you really can't go too far wrong. So give him a go if you haven't tried him already. It is kind of amusing how I've like got all the strikers very, very close together and to be honest, I don't think there's much in between them, but I do think Melita just edges out the others in terms of overall performance, in, in terms of like offering you know the most complete striker package compared to obviously the other forwards that I've mentioned. Anyway, as you can expect, we're talking about Melito next. Um, 140k on a PS, 160 on Xbox at the time of recording. And uh, yeah, as I say, a pretty complete forward. Obviously not super quick, but still quick enough. He's got very, very good positioning in game. And uh, I also think his finishing is up to a very nice standard. Do wish he had, you know, one better skill move, currently only on three. But um, yeah, still good short passing, Good enough ball control and some pretty nice physicals make him a very good striker option, especially for Siri aside. So uh, yeah, do like him this year. Nowhere near as good as Dion Tyler, who is absolutely nuts in this game, but um, still a very, very good striker option, as I say, for those Italian league teams. Okay, we're now in the top four and we have Jäger Nikola, who I actually think is pretty underrated. Obviously, the Bundesliga is just full of very, very good centre-back options. There are some absolutely elite um, CB options there. But this card, I've got to say, is very, very good. Now, obviously, he isn't that quick compared to some of them Bundesliga options. However, you put a Shadow Kemp style on him, you do kind of fix that problem. But the Bundesliga is home to some centre-backs who have 88 pace as a base stat in the form of Lacroix, 85 pace on Klosterman, 81 on Akanji, Upamakana, and you get the picture. But if I'm being honest, and I think we all realise this, this year centre-backs, although pace is important, it's not as important as it has been in previous years just because of how ultimate team is. With defences sitting back quite naturally, you can get away with a bit of a slower option in your defensive line. Now, obviously you don't want someone too slow, but this guy isn't. Even his base pace is good enough, but with the right chem style, obviously it's pretty damn good. Coming away from that topic anyway, defensively, the guy is ridiculously good. He is very, very solid. With a Shadow Chem style, nearly all his defensive stats are maxed out, and he really does make for a very good defender. Physically, he's a beast already, even without a Chem style, and he just does a very, very good job in that back line. If you haven't tried him yet, I do recommend giving him a go. He's actually much better than uh, maybe his price tag would indeed suggest. But like I've already said, we know why he's not too expensive. It's because you've got so many very good centre-back options already for Bundesliga teams. Okay, now it's time for the top three. And in the third place spot for me is Clint Dempsey. Now, now is a good time to remind you guys that this is my personal top 10 after using these cards. And I also want to say that value for money does come into consideration. However, if you're one of them people who's right now thinking, Kieran, really? Dempsey? That high? Yes. And if you are thinking that, I've got to ask you, have you tried this card? Because it's actually really, really good. Obviously, it's super cheap because he's not too easy to get into teams. But he actually is a very good cam for this stage of FIFA. Four-star, four-star on him. Good pace for a midfielder. Very, very good shooting for a midfielder. Decent passing and uh, not too bad dribbling either. And on top of all that, his physicals are quite good. So he's not too easy to dispossess of the ball. He can definitely do a job um, in the camera roll or even at centre mid if you wanted a very attacking one due to his high low wear rate. I'm telling you this card is pretty underrated and if it was in you know like a much more popular league for ultimate team this card would cost a lot and I mean a lot more.
In the second place spot for me is Mostovoy, who is just a very, very good attacking midfield option. He's got brilliant passing, really good dribbling, and even his shooting without a chem style isn't that bad. But if you apply a hunter to this guy, his shooting at that point becomes ridiculously good, and his pace obviously becomes great as well. So when you have the hunter chem style on this guy, his card just looks absolutely fantastic and on top of all these wonderful stats he's also got some decent physicals as well so he's not too easy to knock off the ball obviously the the biggest thing about this card is that five star weak foot that on a cam is just it's what you want to see it really really is this guy is a very very good distributor and uh, he'll do an excellent job for you if you can fit him into your side so that leaves one man for the number one spot and in that top spot for me personally is Freddie Youngberg, who I've got to say is a lot better than some of his stats suggest, especially in the shooting department. Like, he can definitely score you some goals and will score you some goals should you try him out. He's got some decent passing and can definitely create some chances, and his dribbling for the most part does feel very good as well, and I would once again say better than the in-game stats do actually suggest. The only thing I didn't like about this card, to be honest, was the fact that his composure isn't the best, and under pressure can come a bit unstuck, but for the most part, he is a really really good wide option for Premier League sides and as I say if you can pick him up if you can fit him in he'll do a very good job for you he's currently coming in at under 150k on both consoles and like I've said before I can only imagine these foot hero cards are going to go down in price as uh, more of these are packed so yeah it could become insanely good value um, in a couple of months or even a month or so this market this year is just crazy so there we go those are my top 10 best cheap Foot Heroes available in FIFA 22 Ultimate Team. Let me know your thoughts on my personal rankings in the comment section down below. If you disagree with any of them, that's absolutely fine. But be sure to be active in the comments and let me know how you would rank them instead. Thanks for watching. There's a playlist on the left for the best players in FIFA series. And there's a playlist on the right for some FIFA 22 player reviews. Hope you enjoyed them. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.